Welcome to the Young Hang Hot Rod Shop. We are back in the Young Hang Hot Rod Shop, and today we're going to get a look at how the CS4 deals with all the heat associated with a long fill run. Before we get to all that, let's take a moment and thank the fine folks that think enough of content like this to actually support it where it counts. Consider becoming a member yourself or just hit the thanks for a one-time donation. And if you can, use my Amazon links if you want to poke around on there too. It really does help. This run is basically the same one we did in the last video where we tested the fill performance against a half liter and a 6.7 liter pressure vessel. I wanted to understand how the heat was being managed and if there were any hot spots or trouble areas. Let's look at the placement of the thermocouples. Channel 1 of the recorder is the top of the compressor cylinder. On this pump, I believe, that is the high pressure region. They have the thermal cutoff switch mounted right where I place the thermocouple. So we can see how close this unit gets to the limit during a fill lasting well over 3 hours. Next is the cover on the 350 watt brush DC motor that is the heart of this machine. Typically, the area where the fields interact on a motor will yield the highest temps. So I put the thermal couple right in the middle of all that. In the last video, I mentioned that the warm air being ejected on the radiator vent was very obviously carrying away some heat. So I placed the thermal couple in that airstream to gather some intel. The fourth channel was a probe stuck right in the coolant tank. Of all the probes, this one likely had the best coupling to the media being measured. Since my recorder is only a four channel unit, I did use another probe on a separate display simply for capturing the ambient in the hot rod shop. It started out in the mid 60s and during the run got a little over 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Since the recorder does not actually display while it's recording, the time lapse only shows the fill and the ambient when I remembered to wake the display unit. The fill took just over three hours. Let's look at the data. This is the comma delimited data file from the recorder, but I think a graph makes way more sense for the purpose of explanation. In this graph, we see a couple of things. One thing that stands out to me is that during this fill event, we never reached stasis, meaning the unit continued to climb during the entire run. Not really a bad thing, as the workload increased all along, but probably a good idea to keep in mind that they do give us a 5-hour run limit. I will add that typically when the run time is thermally driven, which I think this data indicates, they usually specify an ambient temperature. I guess Jason assumed we all operate these units at the same temperature. Oh boy. Sorry to call you out again, Jason. He actually reached out to me after I called him out in one of the early, earlier videos. He said he did not recall the conversation I spoke of. I said, I do, and I have the email. I did ask if he wanted to start over, and I never heard from him again. Oh well. Jason, if you want to put your best foot forward and you care about investing in your brand, I'm here and I can help you a lot. Just keep in mind that if it's really hot where you are running, this you might want to T-rate that run time a bit. What did impress me was how well the head, coolant, and radiator air temps tracked each other. This tells me the thermal components are pretty well designed for the for the job. So as far as keeping the pump cool, well done. Kudos to the manufacturer behind the GX brand. Seems to work great and did not ever get close to 65 Celsius or 149 Fahrenheit that would have stopped the fill. The head hit 118, so we had lots of headroom there. 
The drive motor did get fairly warm at 162. While that sticks out, it's pretty normal for a motor of its size and power. I don't think it was ever close to the temp rating for the magnets, the lacquer on the windings, or anything else. I would love to see a portable with a brushless motor. That would take the efficiency and cool factor to all new levels. Maybe an area for the hot rod shop to explore could be cooling this motor a bit. Probably not adding the load to the existing system, but maybe a simple heat sink on the motor and a cooling fan that does not interfere with the existing airflow. The rest of the system works so well, I would not want to muck any of that up. That being said, reducing that motor temp even 20 degrees might be, well, cool. I have created some simple plug-in 12-volt taps if you want to run some cool lighting, like I did for the flow indicator. It always catches my eye when it's running. The LED is a UV one, and I have those and the taps made if you want to easily hot rod your own CS4. I am still working on the other flow indicator idea, but the first two iterations did not perform as well as this one. So, like they say, back to the old drawing board. One of our viewers and a supporter of the channel did an awesome job installing an hour meter on his own CS2. When he's not moving VIPs around in this, he likes to play with air guns. Thanks for the photo, Ron. Thanks again to all my supporters. You guys are awesome. Be a light in the darkness and go fly some pellets.